Well, certainly Ulsa is the main feature in the Atlantic Basin right now. Winds of 45 knots, that's 50 miles an hour. Pressure of 1,004 millibars moving northeast at 18 knots, that is 21 miles an hour. Really got some gas on it. It's gone at quite a speed right now. Uh, we'll take a look at the storm uh, more here. I'm more concerned about the flash flooding and the rainfall potential at this stage. And you see, we do have this moderate risk of flash flooding pretty much north of Philadelphia, then into Portland and right up towards the Canada border. So very heavy rainfall is expected from this system. If we take a look at this rainfall graphic, you can see this uh, spot of yellow here just south of Hartford. Uh, that is more than four inches of rain um, from this storm, which is quite a hefty amount. I think the National Hurricane Center might be downplaying this storm a little bit. I think there's definitely going to be more rainfall, especially we've already had totals around the Richmond and Norfolk area in the past sort of 12 hours that have totaled to more than uh, four to six inches of rain. So definitely need to be watching this one out. I think there is going to be a little bit more severe than what we are thinking. Currently, we have that tropical storm warning out in effect right from the uh, mid-coast of North Carolina through to Maine and then into New Hampshire as well. So a really widespread area of uh, tropical storm warnings. That does include the New York metropolitan area and the Washington metropolitan area. So very large cities. It's around 50 million people that are caught up in the path of this storm. Uh, so widespread damage is expected from this system. So just tie down loose stuff in the backyard, that sort of stuff there. Here's a forecast cone. You can see by 2 p.m. tomorrow, that is Friday, the storm will be moving north of New Hampshire and it will be turning post-tropical by then by Saturday morning moving into Canada, Nova Scotia and then on to Newfoundland by late Saturday and then by Sunday it will be a big large extra tropical system with quite low winds and not much for threat at all the threat for the US is basically in the next 12 hours, that will tell us how much damage we are expecting from the storm which isn't too much but then again we could be seeing some branches come down. Easy IR satellite imagery from the storm, now it is quite a decent looking one as we load this imagery up, um, there's some very nice cloud tops around the centre of the storm of the minus 70 sort so very heavy rainfall will be falling under them and you can see they're starting to move into the Washington area and New York just up the coast a little bit will be starting to cop the storm in the next sort of few hours or so and very strong winds are being recorded uh, towards the southeastern side uh, of the sort of around 45 miles an hour so we could be seeing some branches come off trees uh, things thrown around a little bit so make sure you uh, stay indoors and stay safe from this system now we're going to take a look a little bit more long term uh, here's the GFS model on um, the North Atlantic for the next 384 hours. It's not too much of note, but there are a few areas that we do need to be watching. So we have, of course, Elsa moving up. That'll be uh, gone in the next sort of 48 hours or so. We also have this little system down here that weather weenies have really picked up on, but um, it's not really going to become a system. Still definitely be uh, one worth watching. I think it's more going to move into the Eastern Pacific and then become a little bit of a problem for areas in the Eastern Pacific. In fact, the Eastern Pacific is really lining up for some, uh, for some violent hurricanes, and we'll be taking a look at that quite soon uh, but um, definitely not really much of a threat for the Caribbean just heavy rainfall is the problem here but you will see it around 120 hours and beyond you have this upper level low start to form around this uh, around the subtropical ridge which is quite far north actually it's really moved north um, since Elsa has came through and it won't really be taking that dive down but by 180 hours you see that this upper level low starts to gain a little bit of traction there is a little bit of uh, precipitation around the area and you take a look at the vorticity on the area area at uh, it's 180 hours that we're looking at. You take a look at the vorticity on the area. You can see that it is a closed um, upper level or mid-level center from this uh, system, which is uh, not, it wouldn't be too hard for the storm to make a closed lower level center from this sort of setup. Now, this, is the, this is the exact same setup we had for Tropical Storm Danny. In fact, the same location, believe it or not, just a little bit larger. And you can see it does stay closed. And we have that upper level low, which could be quite efficient at dropping that lower level low, uh, but really not much for threat now but what we do also need to be watching is these frequent tropical waves now especially this one here this looks to be quite a strong one hour 186 we've taken that back to hour 186 on the precipitation there is nothing here which is interesting the gfs tends to pick it up that you do see this mid-level vorticity here the mid-level rotation we have this defined wave access here that is actually moving through again a little bit like how elsa formed but dies as it gets into the caribbean it's just a little bit too early for mdr storms at this time but if we take it to sort of the the end of the run you see that we have this little area of vorticity here in fact I'll take that back a little bit because this is another area that we need to be watching 
there's going to be a significant low pressure system move off uh, the US coastline sort of around the hour 200 time. So it's around about 10 days out, 8 to 10 days out. And, you, and as this low moves through at around hour 280, you see um, these little sporadic areas of sort of low pressure start popping up along the line. Now, it's still definitely time where we could be seeing uh, Gulf Stream riders, uh, storms that just ride up the Gulf Stream. And you can see here a very nicely defined lower level, uh, a mid level center here at hour 312. That would be something that. National Hurricane Center would probably tag at this time and it is persistent um, it has been very frequent in the model run but um, still definitely a little bit too early to tell it's very long range so I'm not going to be making any calls on it but just it's something that we need to be watching for trend consistency again not really much more on the uh, run this here is more of a subtropical system I'd be very surprised to see a tropical storm form at this latitude and this longitude that is right where the subtropical ridge would be but you do notice that the subtropical ridge completely disintegrates and we we have this high pressure system down here in the Gulf of Mexico, which would very much inhibit um, storm formation around the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, you would think. But this is the prime time for the uh, main development region to really start firing. If we get an MJO pass right over um, the Atlantic at this time, we could be seeing a bit of a storm surge of maybe two or three tropical storms simultaneously at uh, sort of towards the back end of July. And you see this really strong tropical wave, this compact tropical wave move off. And it seems to gain a little bit of traction as well, um, moving over the Cabo Verde Islands. And it's got quite a defined wave axis, exactly how Elsa formed, exactly how we'd expect main development region uh, storms to form a strong tropical wave here and again as that subtropical ridge moves oops my bad as this subtropical ridge moves well out of the way we start to see the main development region become really hospitable for storms because typically um, towards the height of the season the subtropical ridge moves a little bit further north and we see less shear in the main development region so could this be the early sign of an early August surge we have to wait and see at this stage I'm definitely not expecting tropical storm Fred to form before July 20 I did a poll out in the um, community page and most people think Fred will form between July 13 and July 19. That's definitely reasonable and rational but uh, rational but probably at this stage it will be after July 20. Again we just have to be watching the models for trend consistency. Um, it, the GFS does a really good job with these uh, sort of long range suggestions so just one to watch but not one to be scared about at this stage. Now earlier on I did promise we'll take a look at the Eastern Pacific so here we are right now. Now the Eastern Pacific has some juice lined up for us right now. I think three hurricanes off the top of my head which is quite uh, the show that we'll be seeing and by hour 90 we start to see this low uh, pressure center here now i just watched the tropical weather bulletin from force 13 they do suggest that there is a chance of development here long range chance the national hurricane center hasn't picked up on it yet um, a very weak system doesn't hang around for long at most probably tropical depression but then we start to see this here now this is a caribbean storm that the king weenies <laughs> Uh, start the forecast to move through the area um, and it will probably do that um, Atlantic Eastern Pacific crossover as a tropical wave now you start to see our 156 what's scary is that this is really consistent on the GFS and the ECMWF model at this stage our 200 we start to see this storm gain traction and rapidly intensifies now at one point the GFS was calling for 942 millibars which is mid-range category 4 in the Eastern Pacific now it's sort of calling for mid 960s maybe into the lower tier of the uh, 960s. This is our 258, so only about 10 days out, which is, and the GFS has been very consistent on it. There is model support on this. It's a peak time for the Eastern Pacific. I do not doubt their system forming. In fact, I really um, am quite optimistic for this system. Thankfully, though, stays away from Mexico. Um, it might give Socorus a little bit of a hit. In fact, it does cross over Socorus, so um, if you are in Socorus, definitely be one to watch here. But right now, Mexico, Manzanillo, that sort of era, not expecting a direct hit from this system. We also see this second hurricane down here. They're probably about that Category 1 sort of range here, 987 millibar peak. And then actually starts to dance around with that system up here. And then we see this huge um, sort of tropical mess down here. Uh, large tropical wave moving off and before you know it the run ends we start to see these systems gain traction here it might be a little bit too far west to have a sort of system here but could we be seeing tropical storm Hone? we never know from this system kind of hoping for it because i'm getting sick of hearing the name Hone on every single naming list i just want it over and done with at this stage but definitely peak time for the eastern pacific and definitely be the time for the storms to really start churning out in fact i will get to that peak um, of the storm we'll go and have a look at what the models have been saying so yeah 947 millibars and then 959 
millibars now a few runs ago 970 millibars and 36 hours ago 961 millibars 984 millibars so yeah you can see very consistent on the gfs side of things in fact 947 millibars that's scary strong in fact i do actually want to take a look at a sounding that is not the latest run um, if we take a look at the sounding of this system, we'll probably get a good grasp on how strong the winds are in the core of the system. Yeah, at least 110 knots. Um, that is very powerful indeed. That's a decent sounding as well. So we could be looking at a major hurricane here. So definitely be one to watch, but nothing to panic around yet. Just as I keep on saying, watch the models, but don't panic about the models. Anyways, that is the latest that I have. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you're really into this sort of content, follow the second channels and my social media platforms. That's all for me, and I'll catch you all in the next storm.